Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jones and uh, today I come uh, to discuss another topic in uh, mental health where we are looking at alcoholism. To define this term, we can say it is a persistent intake or consumption of alcohol to the extent of depending on it by the user. Alcohol consumption leads to dependence or addiction. The substance itself, alcohol, is a beverage and also can be looked at as a drug which has a sedative effect on the brain. Alcohol has a chemical called ethanol which has sedative property thereby making people drunk. And when we use the word abuse, we necessarily mean the making wrong use of something or misuse or the illegal use of anything such as a drug. That is what is meant by abuse. Collectively, when we say alcohol abuse, we are looking at maladaptive pattern of alcohol use despite knowledge or persistent recurrent social, occupational, physical or psychological mental problems that are caused. Hence, this person continues to consume this product. Despite all this, then we call that alcohol abuse. Let's now look at reasons for drinking. In a mild manner, we can look at hereditary as an underlying and that it may learn in family that people take alcohol within that family. Then entertainment as a form of source of pressure or leisure, people take alcohol. Social factors may also influence people, people to take beer or alcohol due to peer pressure. So that is on social factors. On psychological factors, sometimes people take alcohol in order for them to gain or have courage. Then uh, on environmental factors, some people take alcohol as a cultural or traditional belief which um, may entail them that if you take alcohol, then you are a strong person. So they start taking uh, hard substance like alcohol so that uh, they seem to be strong within that uh, cultural setting. Okay, so now let's look at types of drinkers. Okay, type of drinkers of what we are talking about. So we have social drinkers who drink for entertainment or company. Then we have abusers who drink in order to carry out unwanted act. So these are abusers. Okay, then now let's look at forms of drinking. So there's mania e puto, which is a condition in which one drinks just a little and then gets drunk. Then we have dipsopnia, which is a condition where they drink excessively without getting drunk. Let's now look at effects of alcohol on the brain. Alcohol is a central nervous system depressant like anesthetic drug. Therefore, the level of alcohol on the individual affects them differently. When one has 0.05% of alcohol, you find that their thoughts, judgment and restraint are loosened and disrupted. When one has about 
0.10 percentage of alcohol, their voluntary motor actions become disrupted or affected. If alcohol levels move from z to 0 0.20, the function of entire motor area of the brain and part of the brain controlling emotions and behavior, they all become depressed. If the amount reaches to 0.3%, this confusion or stupor may set in. If the amount of alcohol moves to 0.40%, patient goes or may go into a coma or coma may set in. If alcohol levels within the blood of the individual system reaches 0.50%, okay, and other higher levels than this, the primitive center of the brain controlling breathing and the heart become affected, leading to death. So when alcohol has been taken for too long, it can cause disastrous complication either mentally or physically. Let's now look at mental complications that may come as a result of alcohol abuse. There is what we call alcoholic dementia. The next one is alcoholic infidelity, okay, or paranoia. Then there is alcoholic hallucinosis, okay, or auditory hallucinations may be experienced. There is also a syndrome known as Kosakoff syndrome, okay. Kosakoff syndrome, where there is confabulations. Then there is delirium tremors, or delirium tremors may be seen. Complications related to social problems include loss of employment, loss of family, and loss of social standing. Then complications to do with uh, physical, we can say physical, the body, biology of someone, they may have liver ciliosis, they may have skin rashes, ataxia, ascites, paragra rashes, they may also have increased or poor appetite, they develop a port belly, they may have a puffy face. Other things that are seen include frigidity in women, impotence in men, and other times you may also see diarrhea that is due to weak sphincter or bedwetting that may also be due to loose sphincter. Let's discuss some of the points in management of the patient or client with alcohol abuse. Firstly, we encourage abstinence. And then we establish their reasons or cause for drinking. We can encourage hospitalization where need arises for those that need monitoring. We can give medication, especially thiamine supplement, to replenish the B, vitamin B12 deficiency. We give anxiolytics like lolezepam. Antidepressants can be given because some take to run away from problems or challenges that they've been facing. And antipsychotics, onyololeptics can be given to control anxiety, depression, and psychotic behavior. Injection of B-complex two meals twice a day IM, or that is intramuscular, can be administered to the patient to prevent a paragra. You can rehabilitate the patient holistically so that they can be placed in a job 
if they have social complications of loss of employment you can try to rehabilitate so that family can accept this patient so that um, they can be completely free from these problems and the family coming in to help the patient of course patient also needs to be taught about problem solving and assertiveness for a full nursing care in mental health you can always check my other videos that i've recorded so thank you very much